Hey, what's going on YouTube? Um, this is yet another video. Uh, it's basically an update of my workbench. Uh, I don't know if these deserve videos on their own, but your workbench is kind of your, uh, you know, your man cave, your mecca, your, uh, <laughs> your holy place uh, that you go and um, clear your mind and work on cool stuff. Uh, so anyways, I thought it's worthy of um, some video updates. So uh, over this weekend, I have uh, done two new additions to the workbench. Uh, one is where my soldering station is here on the right side of my bench. Uh, I added, let's see if I can get a good, good angle here. Uh, I added a power strip because I didn't have any form of a power strip on the outside top of my workbench. Uh, I don't often need it because, um, you know, those are already hooked up underneath my bench. All my instruments have... Uh, all my instruments have their own um, power strip back behind them, which is plugged into another GFCI power strip uh, just for safety's sake. But on top, um, I just didn't have anything. And sometimes, like for example, that stupid thing, the uh, my Agilent multimeter, uh, it comes with rechargeable batteries, which I guess you could say is awesome, but the battery life is pretty pitiful and... Um, you got to plug it into the wall to charge it. So now I will be able to charge it here instead of what I was doing. Uh, would be I didn't want to put it under my workbench because I didn't want to accidentally uh, move in my chair and then kick my multimeter and break the screen or something. You know, so uh, what I would do is just go set it on the bathroom counter and uh, charge it there. And <laughs> less than ideal. So now I'll be able to plug it into here and then just uh, set it on my workbench top and let it charge here near its home. Um, I don't know what else I'll plug into it. Uh, I guess I got a heat gun. If I ever use that, I can plug it into there. Um, but it's it's just uh, either way, it's going to be nice to have a, a power strip. Um, I bought a really long power strip thinking I could mount it and it would cover this whole surface, but uh, the problem with it is it's too long and my woodworking skills are too imperfect to where uh, it actually doesn't sit flush. I, you probably can't tell from the video. video is actually pretty generous, uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's a really long power strip that had maybe six to eight um, outlets in it, and it's actually black, and it probably matches better than the stupid gray one, but uh, this is the smallest one I could find that had mounting tabs or mounting ears on the top and bottom, which is what I wanted because I wanted to mount it uh, on the side out of the way. And I also like that the cable comes out the bottom where um, I can just have it go straight down behind the uh, workbench. So it's just kind of uh, out of the way, not too much of an eyesore, and uh, it's going to be handy. So that's kind of one of those things. Most people already have something like that on top of your bench. Uh, I didn't, and it was quite annoying having to uh, get underneath my workbench every time uh, I needed to plug something in. So that is going to pay itself off really quickly through convenience. Uh, so another thing, as you've probably seen my workbench... Uh, I have a computer at my workbench with a few monitors, a wireless keyboard, which I don't know if you really see. I usually move it out of the way for videos and my mouse. And this is just a mouse pad. That's It's like a... I've, I can't find this anymore, but it's a mouse pad that's a sticker. I peeled it off a sheet and then stuck it to the surface of my workbench, and then now I have an awesome mouse pad. So, awesome by the way. Sorry, my uh, camera tripod... or my uh, microphone tripod is getting in my shot here. So anyways, I got a computer set up, you know, I can pull up schematics, I can look up data sheets, I can look up tutorials, videos, whatever I need. Uh, I also use it for slicing and rendering uh, and doing my 3D printing stuff. So it's actually a pretty, pretty halfway decent uh, processor. I think it's a 4770K or maybe it's a 37. No, I think it's a 3750K, but it's it's uh, more than enough for just a standalone workbench computer that 90% of the time is just used to open the browser. So, uh, anyways, I've had this this whole time, but one thing it's never had is sound. Um, I didn't never had any speakers, and then I found recently that uh, I'd pull up a YouTube video or something. I'd be eating dinner at my bench, and then uh, <laughs> I found a cool video, and then I go to watch it, and I'm like, crap, I don't have sound. And I don't have headphones with a long enough cable to go down below the workbench to where the uh, actual computer is, which is right down there. So uh, what I did is went and bought 
I went to Micro Center. I love going to Micro Center. It's good to find excuses to go to Micro Center. Uh, went to Micro Center and found that they had a Logitech 2.1 computer speaker set. Uh, normally, I think it's for 35 or 40 dollars, and they had it for 21 dollars, which is a really good steal. I mean, it actually has two half decent looking speakers with little woofers on them. Uh, no tweeters, but the woofers are small enough. I think they cover the highs and the mids pretty decently together. And it even has a powered sub. It's it's really cheap powered sub, but hey, a powered sub's a powered sub, right? Uh, I don't need high fidelity sound. Um, I have a, a really high-end headphone setup uh, for my main workstation computer. And so I've got all the high quality sound I need for my workbench. I just need sound. I don't really care how high a quality or low quality it is. I just wanted... Uh, my criteria when I was buying it is small. Small enough I can mount it either underneath and have it hanging upside down, but you know, they'd obviously, they can't be very tall if I'm gonna mount them underneath, else they're gonna be blocking the view of my monitors. Um, so what I ended up with was a set, and here is one speaker. As you can see, it's actually got like a decent foam uh, surround for the uh, cone. And then the other one is over there, and it actually fit perfectly uh, above my instrument rack where I keep uh, all my cables for my instruments above them. So I just sandwich them in there and they're good to go. And then uh, most of the things on my, on my instrument rack are actually pretty deep depth wise, except my multimeter. Uh, if, if anyone's seen the Agile multimeters in any reviews, uh, they're actually pretty thin. It's, it's not very deep. It's only like uh, maybe six inches deep or something like that tons of room behind it. So uh, I put the subwoofer back behind there and then I drilled a hole that goes up to the uh, top section where I keep all my wires. And so that's how I got the wiring from the speakers to the center and then down to where the subwoofer is directly behind uh, my uh, Agilent scope. And then from there, uh, I went digging through a box of cables I had and luckily, <laughs> One of the times I ordered from, uh, if, if, if you're familiar with Monoprice, you know that they have really, really, really cheap uh, cables. But the problem is, you know, you buy an HDMI cable that's six foot for like $2.50 or something crazy cheap. And then you go to pay for shipping and shipping costs three times as much as the damn cable. You know, it'll be like $10 shipping for a $2 cable. So the last, any anytime I order from Monoprice, I try to order a bunch of stuff, even if I don't need it, just to have it on hand, and I'm glad I did last time. I happen to have um, a headphone, like, male-to-female cable. It was that TRS? I can't remember. Um, basically, it's, it was like a six-foot male-to-female headphone jack cable. Uh, three, three and a half millimeter. So uh, I connected it to the end of the cable because there's no way it was going to reach from there all the way down to there behind my bench. Uh, I'd only get like halfway. But with that cable, um, I was able to get it to go all the way down. So back behind uh, my bench multimeter, I uh, drilled a hole in the back and then so the wire goes out the back and then down to here. And just for good measure, since you can't see it, uh, I just used some uh, masking tape to uh, hold the two connections together just to make sure they don't come loose and start popping and crackling because that would annoy the piss out of me. So anyways, uh, got some speakers now. Um, you know, they're not going to give you ear shattering sound or crazy pounding bass, but for $21, you know, they're not that bad. It's got a powered sub and two decent drivers. Uh, I can't really complain for the price. And more importantly, I needed ones that uh, fit my physical limitations of where I was going to mount them. So that works out perfectly. And and they're pretty small, so they don't really waste too much space where I uh, store all my cables. Uh, and um, it's nice and neat and um, tidy, and it works. So now if I'm uh, on my workbench computer and I pull up a YouTube video or something or just need to reference something, usually it's, it'll be like a YouTube video or something. Uh, I'll be able to watch it now without having to... Uh, email myself the link to the video and then go over to my workstation computer or pull it up on my phone or whatever, you know, it's annoying to have to do that. Now I will not have to do that because I have sound. So kind of a minor thing, but uh, nonetheless, it's something to discuss. So uh, that is it for this video, I think. Um, if I change, make any other changes or have any additions to my workbench, uh, I'll upload another video. But uh, uh, yeah, see you next time.